This is very much a, a, a story of work in progress. So um, as you see, it's not in a civil engineering application in particular. We're going to be, uh, it's structural health monitoring, but the structure here is, is actually an aircraft structural component, to, which is, uh, Danny will, will speak some more about it. What I am going to, uh, just to give you a very quick idea of what the thing looks like, you can see there on the right-hand side, so it's some sort of a metal part. And uh, this metal part is, uh, is, is known to be subject to likelihood of cracks appearing in different places and so on. It's not always in the same location. And uh, so this gives you an idea of the geometry. What's the size model of this thing? That, uh, the real one. The real one is about four meters. OK, so it's a big, it's a big part. Now, um, we, where we came in in the picture here, I mean, Northeastern, is on the issue of the uh, spatial positioning of the crack. Um, as Danny will clarify even further, they have been making a lot of progress on identifying that a crack is present. The, the, the issue that is at hand now is where is this crack? Uh, when, when it's very, very small, of course, so that one can have some information on the spatial position of this crack. So this is where we came into the picture to try to see if we could do something about it. And what I'm going to do here is to provide you just with enough of a uh, outline so you can appreciate perhaps what is the angle that we are looking at in, in, uh, in finding this. So, um, and by the way, uh, well, the, the, the presentation that I will do in the next uh, slides to give you the idea of the, of the strategy is not presented with the part in the background as if it was to do that part. It's just the general uh, theoretical background. Uh, what we are assuming for the discussion is that we have some sort of a structure for which we are able to collect data over some period of time. And then time has elapsed, and for whatever reason, overloading or aging or whatever it is, something has changed, and we are taking data at another time. Okay? So from this data, we have some sort of characterization of this system. Let's say S0 and S1 in here. Uh, Danny and Miltech and so on, they've already done the detection issue, and we're pretty satisfied that this is not the same as that, that something is the matter, that something has happened. And what we're trying to do is to obtain some information regarding where is this uh, thing that has occurred. So from a, if you look at it at first glance, you might say, well, this might be solvable within a model of dating proposition. In other words, Make a model of the part. Assume there's some stuff you don't know. Tweak it until the response of the model somehow is in harmony with what you're getting the data, and then call it done. Say that these are the parameters. Maybe it tells you where the crack is. The problem with it, again, if, if you work on this, you already know it's, it's naive, but the problem is essentially that there are so many parameters that the problem is very ill-posed. So you try to do this, there is a zillion ways to tweak it uh, that almost match the data, and therefore you don't really get any information there. So this is the basic idea, it's in this slide. What we're trying to do is kind of look at the reverse side of the coin. Instead of looking at what has changed, we're looking at what has not changed. So that's why the idea null. No, it's not very clear, but this is the body, in this case the part or whatever it is. Let the coordinates defined by the sensors be feasible positions for actuation. What this simply means is assume you have a sensor here, a sensor here, and a sensor there. And let those positions be places where, for the purposes of discussion, you could have loadings. Okay? These loadings won't really necessarily exist in reality, but let that be the case. The question that we ask is this. Is there a set of excitations, L1, L2, LM? M being the number of sensors. Is there a set for which the strain field in the subdomain that contains the damage is zero? In other words, is there a way to excite this part, this structure, this whatever, such that the damage is entirely unobservable? You can't see it. You cannot see it because the stress field that is being generated by these loads is identically zero within the patch where there's been a change. Okay, that's, that's the basic scheme, if you'd like. So the, I, the answer to that, theoretically, is that sometimes they exist and sometimes they don't, and it would be inappropriate to go into the details. But the point is that 
uh, they do exist quite often. Uh, the conditions is how many sensors you have, what is the type of damage, and so on. And why do we care? Well, we care because when they exist, it turns out that you can prove mathematically that you can pull them out from the data without having a model, without knowing anything where the damage is, just by signal processing, we can extract these things. If you are capable of doing that, then you just simply do the following. I think I wrote it there. When they exist, they can be obtained from the data and used to locate the damage. How? Obviously. Get them, <coughs> apply them to the body, compute the stress field, look where it's zero, done. That's where your damage is. Right? So that's, that's the simplified version of the situation. The question, of course, is do they exist? Can you really get them from the data and so on? So I will spend a few slides to tell you some essential things. <coughs> it is important for the sake of confusion and minimization that these loads that I'm talking about are not loads that exist in reality. They don't have anything to do with what loading is there on the part. They, I'm not even going to apply these loads to the real system. These are just mathematical fictions that will be applied to a model to create a stress field that will be purely numerical and whose distribution is going to have to say something about where the damage is. Okay. Um, the way that we pull this, this, uh, these excitations uh, will entertain these next two slides or three, which I'll go quickly. The point is that from very well-known techniques, even if we don't know anything about a certain system, provided that we accept some assumptions on linearity and so on, finite dimensionality, it is possible to map input to output through some matrices that we can pull out from the data. So let's say that, that you have done that. Actually, that's too much detail. So let's just say that you have done that. So you take the data, you grab all these channels, you come up with some mathematics, and you say, this is this matrix that characterizes this condition. Okay? Subsequently, when you're interested to contrast the situation, you have collected a new set. You have done whatever you did before once again. And therefore, on the one hand, you have the Monday matrix, and on the one hand, you have the Friday matrix. So these are, and you have suspicion, well, actually, Danny has confirmed that Monday and Friday is not the same because some sort of a crack is there. So we're trying to find out where it is. We've got these two, two sets. So um, these sets that we are handling here, um, it's, it's uh, let me see if I can. Simplified. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So in this particular application, let's say that this set, and this would be easy for civil engineers anyway, or for structural engineers, let's say for the moment that this matrix is actually the flexibility matrix. I mean, uh, structural analysis one. The relationship between loads at a sensor, at a position, and the movement of, of, at that position. So this is two flexibility matrices. FD, I mean, FU, which is the static flexibility in the reference state, Monday. FD, the static flexibility in the damage state, right? There is the difference between the two. So we see that they are different. Where is the information about where is the damage? Here is the key then. Um, I said it before, but you gotta if you're going to concentrate, this is the second. If there is a vector 